First things first, let us share things. All right, can you all see the planning issue? Yep, I see it. Okay, cool. Also, don't forget to open the agenda because uh, I do have a few. Looks like you're all there. Never mind. All right. So this is our uh, Secure and Protect planning meeting for milestone fifteen two, and I want to start off by going over a couple uh, mini announcements, and then we can dive in to go through uh, the tables. Uh, the first thing is I wanted to remind everyone that has a complete UX roadmap to fill in the. Uh, link here for your tables for the theme that you're playing and working on within this table. Um, of course, if you haven't completed your roadmap, then you won't do this. Uh, any questions on that? Well, the, the two issues that we have in 15.2 are actually not tied to a roadmap. So uh, I guess I can just put NA or something. Okay. Yeah, that works. They're, they're just kind of one offs. But cool. Uh, the next thing I wanted to remind everyone uh, that for this milestone, for 15.2 milestone, um, I would like everyone to try to 50 50 split your total capacity across group and flex to see if that helps everyone uh, better manage expectations in terms of what they've committed to for this milestone versus all the other stuff that always comes up all the stuff you don't know you don't know basically so you'll be able to have enough uh points set aside to manage that questions there okay the next thing is um we have a push and i'm pretty sure that the product is aware of this too especially since we have an okr in, in uh this quarter to focus on uh completing <clears throat> S1s and S2s. We don't have any S1s, but we do have a few S2s um, that we want to look at. So we'll need to figure out how to plan for these. Technically, we have at least another milestone before we need to be done with all these, uh, but no reason to procrastinate if we don't have to. So there are two new ones that don't show up in this um, planning OKR or tracking OKR issue. Um, one's for uh, container security, one's for threat insights, and then these these are the ones in here are sort of random. So I've just picked designers to uh, work on them. I don't know if you all have seen these yet. Looking at back in space, it seems like now. No, I'm I'm just now seeing this for the first time. Uh, the threat insights one. Okay. I don't know when it came up. Yeah, that's one of those ones that's kind of like weird borderline. Who owns it kind of thing? Well, because we don't own any of the configuration pieces of any of the analyzers, we do technically own the main configuration page. Uh, yeah, this is the first time I've seen this one too. Also, I need to expand the history because it looks like uh, IP actually assigned this to the analyzer group. And then at some point it got is, moved over to us. Is this even a secure thing? Like, could you looks, reword this and say, detect when a feature is being enabled? Yeah. Because there's other mm -hmm. features that go through YAML. Absolutely. I think this was stemmed from a UX card card specifically looking at enabling security features, and that's why it's focused on that right now. Yeah. But you do have a good point that it could be larger, uh, a larger scope. Then perhaps what we can do is, uh, Becca, since you're the DRI for Threat Insights, maybe you can just ping Matei, I guess, to see. Yeah, there's nothing else in here to see what else. Uh, 
you know, if it is us, if it's them, if we just take away the word secure, does it really mean us? You know, that kind of thing. To see if we can maybe hand it off. Okay. Basically, it's got our label on it. So that means we have to play some part. Even yeah. if the part is removing the label and putting someone else on it. That's fine too. I just, I just see a lot of red flags uh, with this one. Because if we design it, focus on secure features and adding guidance in the MR for secure features, there's going to be a bunch of pushback about like holistic thinking and are we, do we have a framework for this? And then it's going to get bottlenecked. So I would just advise to try to make this more ambiguous and say what features can be done with this. And then maybe this is the growth. Uh, stages work to do. I mean, that's where the UX scorecard came from. I'm looking at that now. It was something that they were running for trial user awareness and conversion. Yeah. I don't want to put 100% confidence on this, but I'm 95% sure this doesn't belong to Thread Insights. I mean, I, I guess I, I'm also just uh, questioning the process of another team putting a severity label on that. Like, I guess within the context of this scorecard that he did, I, I'm I'm confused how he came up with um, severity too. Um, Good but if it's not something that we're hearing from like on our end from like our target audience as a huge issue, then like we should be able to prioritize accordingly. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I jump to this page whenever I need to think about what severity we're able to put on. Basically, if, it, if either of these are possible, there's a workaround. It doesn't stop anyone from completing their job then it's not going to be an S1 or an S2. That's what the, there's a workaround because if there wasn't, people wouldn't be paying us money for our features they've implemented. Yeah, so it's possible the S2 is wrong as well. Might have just been indexed high to get some attention and then we can always relabel it. It, de it depends. I'm, I've, I've suggested that thought process in the past, but uh, careful, got to be careful because then it waters down the meaning. I mean, I think it's a not a two. Yeah, okay. And um, not a, <laughs> right. Well, and I, I think it's also maybe they're coming at it from the perspective of a growth <laughs> conversion funnel. This is a blocker to getting them into awareness of a premium feature, but for people that have already paid for it or are already on Ultimate and using it, it's almost certainly not because clearly people are finding the features and enabling them and doing the things with the, with the features. It's also, they looking at that issue again, they've put it in the gross section, but in DevOps secure, which was actually auto labeled because it looks like Neil was the one that put the group thread insights label on it a month ago and didn't, uh, didn't leave much in there. So I'm kind of inclined to kick this back. Okay. Because I also don't think it's fair that on. this has been sitting out there for six to eight months and only came over to us a month ago with an S2, and now we've got to, you know, jump on this. Yeah. All right. Becca, you okay to take this on and ask those questions and see what you can do with it? Sure. Cool. Thank you. Um, anything with this? Container security. Oh, Sam's not here. Uh, I think this is design ready. Yeah, it's in dev. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about this then, do we? No, we did the work for it already. Technically, that's the ask for the OKRs to make sure that any STs at least have design done. Oh, OK. So hard to see. 
And then it does that. All right, excellent. Um, the other three, when uh, Michael and Becca, when you have a chance, just look through these. Also, uh, it seems like it might be a good reminder to let y'all know that we do have a team tracking issue for our F23 Q2 okay marks. <laughs> so take a look at that as well. Um, I have a feeling uh, composition analysis is going to be asleep for a couple of milestones as Sam cleans stuff up. Um, any idea, Andy, if there's anything going on in here, container security? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I thought that um, I think Sam's existing issue list was pretty well defined. So maybe that just didn't make it into this one. He might not have looked at this yet. Yeah. So you mean like these these things will carry over whatever's left? Yeah. Bunch of nice tabs. Okay. Sam, when you if you happen to see this, can you uh, update the table when you get a chance? And Dast Buzz. Yep, so this is still largely, a lot of what was in the last milestone, just reprioritizing some stuff. The biggest thing is that the CMS is coming up. So that needs to be complete by the end of July. So that's gonna take priority number one right now is getting all the groundwork laid out and recruiting kind of started. Um, so that'll be a big, or not a big ask, because a lot of the stuff will be reusing a lot of the old stuff, just testing with external users. Uh, the next one is uh, just DAS pre-flight configuration. So I have a sense there'll be a few just small design tweaks and stuff that are going to spill over into this next milestone, as well as some like iteration planning and things of that sort. Um, not a major pull on this side either. Okay. Yep. And then the other two are just pretty much downgraded to nice to haves for now. Okay, cool. So you got seven points here. Uh, yep. And so then on the static analysis side, so Derek and I still, or not Derek, uh, Kenner and I still need to just sit down and go over priorities. Um, we're just working on refining the UX roadmap right now. And I think that will help inform what's gonna get put on this table. So hopefully within a, pretty soon, we should have a better sense of what will be included in this milestone. Okay. And then there's nothing in the OKR stuff, anything from this. Still, that might carry over. Oh, wow. Well, career development stuff. How are you feeling about that, Michael, carrying over to? Uh... Oh, I'm sure it'd be good to carry over some more points for that too, just so I have dedicated time for it. Okay. Now, now this is sort of a anomaly, I guess, when it comes to considering the difference between milestone group capacity versus flex capacity. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of feel like this, even though it's on this issue, this is still falling more into the flex as opposed to mm -hmm. group. So something to consider when you're thinking about this 50-50 split stuff. Um, so basically you have maybe two points left for group work. Yep. It's, yeah, that it's sounds probably, right. yeah, it's probably never going to be black and white, but just, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to focus on this for 15 2 so we're really concentrating. Mm -hmm. on, I agree. Uh, making sure we're not picking up more than we can handle. I'd rather uh, under promise and over deliver. Mm -hmm. All right. That all sounds good. Let us go to Becca, vulnerability management. Yeah, so um, Matt, I haven't had a chance to, to bring this up with you. Um, so I'll be out for two weeks in 15-2. Um, so because we're trying to maintain that balance um, between my flex capacity and my group capacity, I'm giving myself only 10 
um, a weight of 10 for the 15 two milestone. So I need to try to aim for a weight of five for group work, which means that I should really only assign one of these as a need to have. Do you see one of these as a priority over the other? I mean, I don't know if report notifications is really a three. Um, I think that's like 95% of the way there. Um, would you say that cancel vulnerabilities is the priority? I mean, that's a tough call. If definitely one of those features that it's nice to have for customers and even our internal folks that are impacted by it, I still don't know how broadly useful it is. Mm -hmm. um, the report notifications and the flip side, I think those are a lot more straightforward and useful to everyone. I'm also concerned that once you start digging into the cancellation, there's going to be a lot of weird little corner cases for stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to end up being bigger than the five. Okay. Because right? we'll have to get into some level of conversation around who has the ability to do that. Is that a you know a new configuration type? Is that only do we just restrict it to like a group level owner? Where do you expose that information? Who can even see that? Is there a way to request a rollback? So okay. I would be fine with the limited capacity just bumping that to 15.3. Okay. Or even or you can start it in 15.2 and just carry it over for 15.3 when you don't complete it, you know? Yeah, I mean, both of these are nice to haves anyway, right? These are not things that we've got that we have to deliver for you know, an external customer or anything. Is there anything else that should be on here that is more of a need as opposed to a nice to have? Well, oh, what are you thinking, Matt? No, I was just trying to think. I mean, you've already got... I think a lot of the designs for the stuff that's upcoming that would be from a development perspective ahead of this anyway, like the um, the auto resolve configurations and everything. So yeah, we already have designs for work that hasn't even started yet. That engineering probably won't pick up until fifteen two fifteen three at the earliest. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty confident we'll be able to. I, I think. I'm just, we're just waiting on tech writing. Uh, I'm looking at the 15.1 issue now, um, just to make sure there's not going to be any carryover. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> we'll get back to the first one, but the second one, uh, I think we're just waiting on tech writing to approve the messages and those alerts and the loading alerts, and then the um, auto dismiss. Uh, I need to respond to your comments um and post some iterations on my on my first draft there that i posted so i'm confident we'll be able to complete those um by the end of 15.1 advanced filtering on the vulnerability report i mean this is such a weird one i'm not really sure how to proceed with this um there's there's differing opinions i've talked to different people with different perspectives on this um i recorded a little walkthrough video of the problem and posted it to the secure channel and wanted to ask engineers for their perspective on which of these would be more implementable maintainable um and I got two responses, Olivier and, and Ross, um, both said that they, they're they leaning towards the filtered search component, um, both because it's already a pattern that we're using elsewhere um, and we should, you know, we should be advancing it where possible. So if we, you know, go with that multi-select um, other teams other pages may want to implement it um we already have the components for it you know for engineers and so i'm leaning in that direction um but i'm now questioning whether or not we want to put this into solution validation and just let users decide um the problem with 
doing solution validation on the filtered search component is if I create a well, I've already created a prototype for it. And it's like, you know, everything works perfectly. You don't get the kind of quirks with the tokenization and tabbing and all of that. And I can't really build that that kind of into the, the design prototype. So I don't know, I kind of feel stuck on this one, but like leaning towards just wanting to propose the filtered search component with multi-select and possibly wrapping. So you don't get any cut off um, filters. Yeah. But that, was the, that was where we left off yesterday, right? Is trying to figure out, that might be a nice to have feature, but we need to figure out if there's any data on how many filters the user would typically apply to see if we need to fix the way that the current tool, the component works with uh, length of uh, added filters yeah so i don't know if like it makes sense to send out you know a brief survey or just poll security engineers internally and say like what what do you think is a common use case for that's, that's a tough question to ask it is a tough question and it's not like we have data on this because our current filters are are you know pretty limited in scope so they're well, they have a uh, hacker one has you know, search and filter parameters. So maybe just asking our AppSec team, what are the common filtering methods they use? Yeah. Um, I mean, we had some moderate success sending out the SBOM survey, which had, you know, what would you want to search for? You know, what are your top things? Um, but then again, I mean, the nice thing about filtered search is it's, a, it's been validated don't have to revalidate has it though i i want to challenge that like i've heard nothing but shade thrown at that component well it's got and even, problems it's the it's logic not, that's the problem but do users are they actually happy with it or have they just resigned themselves to this is the direction that gitlab has gone because even speaking with kristen she said she's not married to keeping it. She doesn't know where it came from or why. And it's not a pattern that I've seen anywhere else that I can think of any other web app. Well, that was another if thing you, that Becca and I had talked about is trying to validate with, with the team that owns it if they're planning on keeping it. If they're not, then why it should it? sounds we? like all options are on the table as far as it's concerned. Right? Like my, my biggest concern in it is we're openly admitting that it doesn't function properly now, and we're going to compound that and take all that work onto the Threat Insights team, which should not have to own basically debugging and improving the component just so we can use something that's already there, right? But like on it's the flip a, side, if you come up with a different way of doing it and everyone likes it, you're still owning it first anyway. The new thing. You have to implement it. You know, right, but then if we push that up into pajamas, then we kind of have transferred that ownership. Right. I guess I would rather do that than have to say, well, the thing you've given us all is broken, and we can either have a very poor experience that's going to get worse because we're going to be needing more of these filters for the types of work that we're doing here, or we can sit on it and wait for that team to decide what they're going to do with the component, which could be a year, let's be honest. Right. Is it is it something where you and Becca can get together with the owners of the current component and really try to nail them down to say you're keeping it or not? I don't think I, they've I mean, I, got a, enough of a bead on where they're headed with that to say one way or the other. I, I, honestly, Justin, I'm at the point where the reason I want to test this is if it comes back that people don't like it, I'm just going to build what's actually functional because I'm, I'm not convinced that our use case is the same as what the filtered search component is used for, right? Because you're starting on the MR screen, on the Epic screen, on the issue screen with nothing. You're starting with the entire universe of stuff, with no filters applied, and then trying to narrow down to a something. Whereas all the vulnerability management workflows already start with filters in place. And I think that's gonna be even more problematic, right? Because we start by default filtering to only showing things that haven't been resolved or dismissed. So you're already gonna have 
a pre-filter in that filtered right. search component. You're already going to have by statuses or you know whatever. And once we start moving into the model of customized views, now you're just going to start with this giant chunky bar at the top, which I think is going to be a really awkward experience. Okay, well. But I'm also questioning like, you know, if, if they have added a ton of filters and those those filters, like the, the drop downs, those might wrap too. Um, I mean, we could start to implement a pattern where, you know, it's, there's a collapse, you know, hide show, um, but that could also start to look kind of funny when you have like more than one row of drop downs, you know? Yeah, but ultimately I think we're talking about two things. Um, one is just what you're saying, how do we manage uh, uh, bleed over when there's a whole bunch of filters, but but the primary thing is which component makes the most sense. And if we're planning on keeping the search filter, I think even though I, I hear what you're saying, Matt, that there are existing filters that will have to be pre-populated within the search bar. If that component is still being used, I think that it would still work for that and that we should stick with it because of all of the things that we would get by using an existing component. If it's true that they're up in the air and not and kind of leaning towards not doing it, they just don't have time to really put into it, that's a different story. Because we do see that there are problems with it. And if they're not planning on fixing it, then why would we want to use it? I, I can totally get behind that. But we we have to it's a catch we have funny to find too out. because it, yeah. it doesn't yeah. come with anything useful to Matt's point. You would have exactly. you literally have to rebuild it and also GraphQL. All right, so here's yeah. another thing. <laughs> we can deviate from the design system. The design system is not all we can do, but we have to have good reason to deviate. So I guess that's really what I'm saying. If you're going to deviate, it has to be different enough that it makes sense to deviate from an existing component. And you have to have clear needs and use cases on why you have to deviate. Is, and is then of course, that they're getting rid of it, why would we want to use it? Yeah. There's that. Is there, is there a, a spike going on, Matt? For us or for? Tech, uh, tech spike for the, re, the filtering. No, there's not a tech oh. spike for us yet. Like I didn't there, want to get to that. There's a tech spike for search. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. You would combine, yeah. I think so that, that could I mean, tip the, the other scales. Thing. The, yeah, well, that's the other weird thing about the filtered search component it is it is implied that free text search would be included. Um, we would have to do what the pipelines page does, which you type in a keyword and then it's like, sorry, raw text search isn't supported. You see an alert afterwards because I'm guessing that filtering is going to be more doable before free text search. So the advantage of the our own custom component with you know creating your own drop downs is we can add a search box later on if and when that's available. Now that's well, an S2 to, sus impacting. Right. Um, so. I have to jump to another call, but I think where we're at with this is we need to really, really figure out what's happening with the current thing and then consider uh, everything I said about deviating from the design system. If, it's a, if you can really put an argument forward on why this is different enough that you should do something different, coupled with the fact that they're either keeping or not keeping the existing component, that'll help determine. Maybe you can do the research to give you some more data if you're not sure you have enough needs to support deviating. Um, but uh, that's, that's the direction I'm suggesting you know, long story short i think this is going to carry over into 15 too yeah yeah exactly <laughs> we got there all right cool um that's all i've got uh let me know if anything else uh comes up um update your tables if you have to otherwise thanks everyone for coming thanks all have a good one